Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Raptor Station podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Sean Davis. Please do go check out the first episode of the Raptor Station podcast, wherever you listen to your own podcast, or on the YouTube channel, the Raptor Station YouTube channel. Please do subscribe and hit that post notification bell so you stay up to date with all things Raptors. Joining me today is my co-host, Luca Rosano. Luca, how you doing, bro? I'm doing well, man. It's always a good day whenever we talk Raptors. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I feel like we're still in a standoff, but hopefully with the schedule coming out soon and the fact that a couple of teams, notable teams, are not uh, in some marquee games, hopefully that means something's coming soon. Maybe I'm just looking into it too much. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty dull for topics at this time of year, as we know in the NBA. I mean, I think we're all sick of talking about Kevin Durant as uh, he came out and said, yesterday that uh he's not retiring so uh we could put that to bed but yeah put between the kd narratives and we had a little bit of different topics with the christmas day matchups there's not a whole ton to get into but nonetheless like you said as we get into like schedules and the month of september there'll be a whole ton to talk about as we uh, gear up for another nba season yeah i can't wait basketball season is easily the best time of year in my opinion but that's neither here nor there let's dive in you kind of touched on the schedule a little bit vegas apparently has set the raptors over under next season for 45 and a half wins luca do you think that's too low or is that right about right yeah you know what i i think it's fair uh just given kind of the raptors track record how they finished last season going into this season the eastern conference is gonna be very very tough so it is a fair over under estimation now i believe vegas does think the raptors are going to take a step back which is going to lead me into my prediction over under 45 and a half before i give you my prediction i'm going to tell you this very good stat out there if you do want to bet on this over under I believe 10 out of the last 11 seasons, the Raptors have hit the over. Sean, can you just take a guess here? The one season the Raptors did not hit the over. Which season do you think that was? The season they played in Tampa. (laughs) (laughs) Which is obvious, right? There you go. Stating the obvious. So it's incredible that this team has exceeded expectations year in, year out, and I think they're going to do it again. There's no reason in my mind that the Raptors don't go over here. I I think they're going to be better than they were just as good as they were last season. So I'm actually going to go over 45 and a half. I think they can honestly get close to that 50 range. So given this current talent level on the team, given their past track record of hitting the over, I think it's a smart bet to pick the over here. Yeah. If this was like anywhere from 57 to like uh, 50, 47 and a half not 57 57 g's uh 47 and a half that'd be a lot yeah 47 and a half to like 49 i might have said okay no bet then that's right about what i would say but i, I think it's the over too man I, I think and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later on but i think there's too many players on this team who you can make an argument for are primed to have a breakout season yeah uh, whether that's scotty barnes or gina Nobi. I mean, these are all, I guess, established NBA players at this point, but they're still super young, so they could take that next step. Um, there's just too many guys on this roster that are likely going to take that next step for them to be a 45-win team, which is a good team, but that's in the East, man. You're probably a first-round exit, and you're like a six or a seven seed. Um, if you had to put like a win total, what, what what range would you put them in? Well, put it this way. They had 48 wins a season ago. And if you ask me, Luca, do you think the Raptors are going to be better going into this season? Absolutely. We are going to talk about some guys who are going to take that quote unquote next step. So I don't see the Raptors being worse than a year ago. Now, obviously, win totals could differentiate because uh, strength of schedule, teams have gotten better in the East. But you look at how the Raptors fared against some of the best teams in the NBA last season. They fared really, really well. And what comes to mind is that West Coast trip they had when they uh, beat Phoenix, handed them one of their very few home losses at that time, uh, taking care Lakers. of business and other tough places to play like Denver. So I think this Raptors team is going to be better this season. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's a tough question. They had 48 wins a season to go. I'm going to say they're going to up the ante here. I'm going to go with 50. I'm going to go with 50 wins right on the nose. I think the Raptors are going to hit that 50 mark. I really do. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Anywhere from like 48, so like basically yeah. the same record as last year, to 52 is probably where I would slot this team at. Yeah, yeah not I, fair. Yeah, 45 and a half, that's too low. I've actually had 
they probably didn't, but is there a reason why Vegas is super low? They underestimate the Raptors, my friend. Uh, people here <laughs> in Canada have uh, – it's become like common knowledge where like we don't even bat an eye anymore when we see this stuff. We just shake our head in disappointment. But like, yeah, it's just an ongoing thing. I, I don't know why they would set it at 45 and a half. They obviously don't have a pulse on this team, and I think they are definitely underestimating the Raptors here. But Raptors fans know the Raptors – have uh you know been disrespected by uh the american media I, I feel like more times than not and in this case sports books uh so uh yeah no that's every more a bit of more reason why you should definitely if you are a sports better of course uh bet on this because i think it is very good value like 45 and a half there's no reason why they shouldn't eclipse that especially coming off a very good season where they were the fifth seed where they won 48 games so yeah, to answer your question, I don't know if there's a particular reason. I think uh, just Vegas doesn't have a good pulse on this team. Yeah, no no way they shouldn't hit this unless knock on every piece of wood. Uh, catastrophic injury happens. Um, yeah, let's, not, let's knock on the Let's the knock again. on everything, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, man, I, I just don't know how you could. I think this is, like you mentioned, a really false representation of this Raptors team. Uh, again, like the guys who are going to break out who we think that could rather uh, you have a top three head coach anywhere one through three. I don't care. Um, you can make an argument for Spo. A couple of the guys who can argue. Um, and Nick Nurse, you know how great he is. Pascal and Freddie are as solid as you're going to get. So I don't know. I don't know how you could really set this at 45 and a half. But that's a good segue into our next topic, some breakout star candidates. For this Raptor squad, I already named a few. OG and Anobi, Scotty Barnes, obviously. Gary Trent Jr., Preston Chua, maybe? Hint, hint. Uh, Luca, who would you say is your biggest breakout star for the Raptors? We're going to talk about the NBA a little bit, too. You just named it, uh, the last player you named there. And I said I was going to be uh, one of his biggest fans, uh, the maybe the president of the fan club by the end of the season. Who knows? Precious Achua. I do think he is going to break out this season. And you look at what he did last year. I mean, he only attempted, um, you know, sorry, the year before that in Miami, he only attempted one three. Last year with the Raptors, he definitely added that three-point shooting to his repertoire. So I think he's going to continue to shoot the ball well from not only three, but also outside, really stretching the floor. And his ball handling skills for his size, Sean, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, this is a guy that we saw go coast to coast on many opportunities whether just Billy. taking it up himself or like dishing it to his teammates so i think if he polishes that a little bit more going into the season that's just another dynamic element to his game obviously he's uh, he proven to be a good rebounder a very good defender some people are high on him saying that he can maybe one day be a defensive player of the year i think you mentioned it too um well i don't know if you went that far but he's got a lot of things to look forward to a lot of things that you got to be happy about. And he is so young. Like how old is he right now? Like 22 years old. Like he is very young. He's just scratching the surface. Um, and I really think he's only going to get better. And that shooting that was like a non factor in the beginning of his career, it really took it, you know, to the next level when he was draining threes, that series against Philly comes to mind. So if Achua can put it all together and he learns from a very good Raptors developmental system like one of the best systems in the nba that is great with taking these young guys and just turning them into very good prospects very good long-term players i mean look what the raptors did to guys like fred van vliet and siakam who literally came from the raptors 905 like what are they going to do with a guy with so much raw potential like precious achua i'm excited to see what that answer is going to be but i'm very high on achua i, I do think he will take that next step, and I do think he's going to uh, break out here. Uh, I see Luca always taking my answers. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. So I actually have a video coming out tomorrow, I want to say, about Precious Achua and why he could be the X Factor. That's how I kind of described him as in that video. So I'm not going to reiterate what Luca just said because I'm probably going to do it in that video that's coming out tomorrow. Oh, do you, do, but, you, do, you uh, have a break, do you have a break, uh, breakdown video coming up, Sean, on the channel? No, it's not a breakdown. It's just me, like, more giving me an opinion style of video. But oh, sure, man. maybe I'll do a breakdown soon. I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm excited for your breakdowns, too. By the way, I just want to plug you here. Some of the best breakdowns. And I can't wait 
for oh. you to carry over some of the stuff you did with Lakers Nation for those breakdowns with Raptors games and Raptors players for this season. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. And uh, since Luca wants to plug it, make sure you guys subscribe here. Again, quick reminder, subscribe here to the Raptors Nation YouTube channel. Ring that post notification bell as well so you can stay up to date with our latest coverage on the Raptors, film breakdowns, and podcasts like this. Uh, these log four podcasts are going to be a very frequent thing going into the season. But since Luca took my answer <laughs> impressions of Chua, I'm going to go Gary Trent Jr. I, I wanted like to say I wanted to say OG at Anobi, but I feel like that's almost an easy answer, right? It's almost too easy. Although I will say, if OG played at an All Star caliber level next season, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it's a thing going out on Twitter this uh, today and this week, rather well, it's Monday if you, at the time of this recording. But um, like, who would you rather have him, Andrew Wiggins, or Mikael Bridges? Probably the three closest players in terms of fit how they play uh what style they fit or whatever, stuff like that and andrew wiggins was an all-star last season i think og definitely has m- the most potential out of all three of those guys probably his ball handling and uh his shooting continuing to rise so if he played yeah. at an all-star level next year that wouldn't surprise me but i'm gonna go gary Trent jr i think part of it is he could very easily wind up being in a contract year he has a player option going into 2024 Uh, And not saying like Sean, he averaged 18 points a game last season, which is incredible for a 23 year old who's a kind of a young 23. He's only 20, turning 24 in January. So like this is a young dude. I think the biggest thing with Gary Trent is just be more consistent, especially with his shooting percentages. It's being a more knockdown consistent player. And I think picking his spots a lot better within the offense going into year three, the second full season, I want to say, with Nick Nurse. So be able to pick his spots a lot easier through in the offense because he almost said this is – follow me here on my comparison. He almost has like Clay Thompson syndrome where eventually if you don't give him the ball and you don't like find him open, next time he touches that thing, he's letting it go and he's just shooting. And he doesn't care. Um, yeah. So like learning when to pick your spots through the offense and find – quality shots um I, I think that'll be the biggest thing for him and be more consistent uh he was relatively healthy last season he played 70 games i want to say so that's it and i think if he can take the load a little bit more off of fred van bleet especially because like we've mentioned in the last episode in previous uh videos freddie's gonna need some help next year so if he can do some ball extra ball handling and running the offense and dishing things out to teammates i think that'll help out as well so um, and again, he could very well, if he has a great season, he can opt out and get paid even more money because the Raptors gonna, yeah. do have his bird rights, I think. And he's going to want to get paid and he's going to, that's going to give exactly. him every bit of incentive and motivation to play really well. So I actually really like that pick. And we saw at the beginning of the new year, he went ballistic. Like when he put it together, he was like putting up numbers that we hadn't seen before joining the likes of DeRozan, um, you know, just torching the, like <laughs> torching the basketball, just putting up crazy stat lines getting his and doing it on both sides. Like he really showed his two-way ability by not only draining shots, draining threes, but also playing incredible defense. So Gary Trent Jr., I do agree that consistency factor, if he gets that down packed and he can provide more of that consistency and he does what he did last season, it's going to be a very scary season for Gary Trent Jr. And he's so young, like you mentioned, and I, I think he enjoys being here. His father spoke about that, how like Gary just paraphrasing here how how Gary just found himself again and how he was happy to be in Toronto and just the role that he had with the team. And, you know, it it showed he was having a good time on the core. You can see from his body language, he gets along with the other guys. That's important. So I -hmm. really like Gary Trent Jr. going into the season as well. Really quickly, I'm assuming this is the stretch you were talking about. So from January 25th to February 1st, the Raptors played five games. First off, that's insane. They played that many games in uh, that's five games in seven days, actually. In that it's a crazy stretch, stretch, it was a crazy stretch, uh, all against Eastern Conference opponents. So I guess that helped it out a little bit. He had five consecutive games of 30 points or more. In all of those games, he shot 20 shots or more with over 45% efficiency or better from the field. And in all of those games, he shot all of those games except for one. He shot 50% or higher from three. Nothing that's, uh, you know, sustainable. 
But and he averaged 30 points or more. He scored 30 points or more in those five games. The only game that he did not average, he did not shoot uh, 50% or more from three was where he shot five for 15 against Miami. But the other games, five for 10 from three, six for 10 from three, nine for 15 from three, and six for 10 from three. That's the so, run I was talking about. And shout out to Sean for digging up the stats. But yeah, those are the numbers that we all saw. And we're just like, what is going on right now? This guy's what playing is happening? like a bona fide star, man. He had 42 on the road against Phoenix, the game you were talking about uh, not too long ago. Like, he has special moments, but there's just stretches in the season. Actually, ironically, right after that stretch, he kind of dipped back down for a little bit, and then he had that, he had a 42-point game against Houston. So I think the biggest thing, man, is just, like, being able to have a sustainable stretch where he's playing high-level basketball, at least production-wise, because, unfortunately, when it talks about getting paid, and I think that is a massive motivation outside of, you know, trying to help the team win. Um, they really value your production a lot more. And that's how you get paid in the NBA, literally, is your production. And, you know, you put up the stats, unfortunately. So just having more sustainable and consistent production from Gary Trent Jr., uh, that's going to be the biggest key, in my opinion, because the traits are there. He's a great player already. Um, yeah. Luca, do you want to tra- stretch to the NBA as a whole just for a sec? Who would you say is your breakout star for the entire NBA? That's such a good question. I was actually looking at like breakout uh, candidates and uh, just reading up on a lot of guys. It's always so tough to like put your pulse on one guy. But um, okay, so if I had to pick, I'm going to go with, uh, it's tough because I'm I'm either going to say Moody or Kaminga. I I think (laughs) I took his answer. (laughs) I did not speak to Sean all week. Don't tell me you have one of those guys. No, I was think I was like because I really didn't have ones so, like same problem here. I'm like thinking, okay, who would it be? Yeah, I was thinking Moody for a sec, but dang it, all right, never mind. Yeah, I was boy. thinking Moody or Kaminga only because you look at the Warriors, like who they lost in the off season, some pretty pretty big pieces, right? You know, Gary Payton uh, the third, Otto Porter Jr. coming to our Toronto Raptors. I think that's gonna open the door for one of those young guys to really fit in. And, uh, you know, make an impact and be given more minutes, more of an opportunity to produce from off the bench. And I look at one of those two guys as taking that next step, taking the opportunity that's given to them. And we saw Moody in particular, like he was going nuts, like during summer league, he was putting up some crazy numbers. And uh, that's a guy who I think is capable of hitting open, hitting open uh, shots you know, getting the three ball rolling. And then Kaminga also had some very good moments as well last season that he showed signs of what he can be. So I think those two guys in particular are going to get ample opportunity to play. And uh, I know I'm kind of cutting the answer here and I'm being cheap by giving you two guys, but I think one of those two guys will be a breakout player. And here we are again, Golden State having another breakout player. I mean, Jordan Poole was that guy from last season. Don't tell me they're going to have another breakout candidate on their team but it, it it looks like they might just because of the young talent that they have <laughs> uh i don't do this very often but i'm gonna pat myself on the back for jordan Poole. i called that one as very many people did i think that was a very easy one to call especially after the year he had prior so i'm actually gonna go with two as well so don't feel bad luca i'm gonna go with desmond bain and i'm gonna go with uh Shea Gojis Alexander, not saying that they aren't recognized as great players, but Oklahoma City is going to be a lot more watchable. I feel like that's a really bad way to talk about a professional basketball team, but it's going to be a lot more eyes on that team this year. I think people are going to realize how good Shea really is. I think he'll start getting more of that respect and credit. Uh, Desmond Bain is, I think, the more guy that he's not already an all-star, but I, I really do think he can be that. You're talking about a guy who, in ways, is similar to Gary Trent Jr., I think he is a really good defender already who can obviously shoot the lights out of the ball that has some playmaking and creativity uh, offensively for that Memphis Grizzlies team. And I think they're going to rely on him too. Cause I think Ja is Ja, So he's going to get a lot more attention and as he should, he's a great player in his own right. Um, but yeah, man, Desmond Bain is awesome. I really, 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 really wanted the Lakers to take him, but we traded for Dennis Schroeder. So that's fun. Um, but no, nah, man, I, I think those would be my two, uh, Maybe they're cop-out answers because they're already established players in the NBA, but uh, I'm going to roll with those two. 
I didn't, uh, I might be totally off here, but didn't Desmond Bain, like, um, he was drafted later on? Yeah, he was pick 30th. I think actually the Raptors had a chance to take Desmond Bain too. That was the year they... Oh, that'd be a great fit. Yeah, selected uh, Malachi Flynn. So, uh, I, I, yeah, so, yeah, the Raptors, I could have had Desmond Bain. So that would have been absolutely crazy. But um, I wanted to ask you this, like, when talking about breakout players and then you talk about leaps, like... Is there a difference in your eyes between like the two like terms? Because like a guy could break out. Like I look, I, I, I like envision a breakout player being a guy who like comes out of nowhere. Whereas like a leap is like, okay. Scotty Barnes. Yeah. yeah. Be going from where he is now to like an all-star or like Anthony Edwards going from where he is now to a superstar. How do you, how do you view like both? Or do you kind of put them in the same category? Cause I was actually thinking about that uh, the other day. That's a great way to think about it. And actually thinking about it now, I agree with that. So I guess I did more of a leap. I did more of a leap. Like Desmond Bain yeah. takes that lead to an all-star. And then um, Shea, I mean, what is he now? An all-star already. So, I mean, I guess a more recognized all-star, I guess, is a, the way I would describe that leap. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good way to think about it. Um, hmm, I don't know who I would have as my breakout then. I guess I cheated. Yeah, I kind of put you on the spot there, but I was just trying to like, I'm just talking out loud here because I was thinking about it for my own sake. I'm like, yeah, you know what? There there, there has to be a distinct, distinction between leap and breakout star. So uh, that's how I view it. And yeah, I just confirmed it right now. Raptors drafted Malachi Flynn uh, right after Celtics draft Desmond Bain officially traded to the Grizzlies. So even the Celtics could have had Desmond Bain. That would have been crazy. All right. I have another one then. Breakout, DeAndre Hunter. I think they're really going to rely on him this year um, to be a three and D guy. He showed some flashes, by the way, he averaged 20 points per game in that Miami heat series where the heat, they were just gobbling up Trey Young, And that sounds weird coming out of my mouth, but that's the best way to describe it because like they were making, they were making life hell for Trey Young in that playoff series. And Deandre Hunter stepped up. He was their second best player in that series. So hopefully you get some positive uh, regression or progression rather in this case. And he continues to show flashes like that. Not saying he's going to average 20 points a game. You're playing with John Collins and John T. Murray and Trey Young now. But um, I think he can at least play at a higher level. Although the stats, I'd be shocked if the stats indicated that. There you go. That's an example of a breakout player. And, And I agree. I think a lot of people are high on him going into the season. Now, one of the players you did mention as a leap. Scotty Barnes taking the next step. Luca, I know you've talked about him a lot on your channel. Um, what what are your thoughts about Scotty Barnes heading into next season? I mean, where do we begin, man? He has uh, this is coming from his trainer uh, Brian Macon. Gained reportedly ten pounds of muscle, and before you think, oh, it's only ten pounds of muscle. You try gaining ten pounds of muscle. It's a lot harder than you think, man. Like I know it's his job. He's an athlete, but still, like you're looking at the photos that we've seen. He's looking absolutely shredded. He's reportedly 6% body fat. There was that picture of him um, on Twitter where he just looks absolutely jacked. Um, Scotty Barnes is going to be scary this season, Sean. And I think what's really impressed me is just like the footage we've seen, like whether it was that viral clip of him clamping up James Harden and just the intensity that he had. And then James Harden praising him for that intensity, um, you know, and then you see Scotty Barnes clapping in his face. Like these are all signs of a winner, a guy who wants it badly. And then also seeing Scotty Barnes improving his shooting, which is the biggest thing that he needed to work on going into this summer. We've seen that. Um, Scotty Barnes is on YouTube, by the way, and he posted a vlog on Thursday night, last Thursday night. And we saw some of that shooting come to life, you know, hitting the the corner three, practicing that, hitting the uh, the pull-up three. If Scotty Barnes develops any bit of a consistent jump shot, it is going to be game over for the rest of the league. Like he's already terrific in so many other areas and and this is a guy who i think is going to just flourish if the raptors do give him opportunities with the ball in his hands and we're speaking about this a little bit off air where i would like to see scotty barnes be given the ball and him be allowed to go to work and be a little bit selfish more times than not because we did see last season that he would look for his teammates that's just a natural playmaker in him but if scotty barnes can look to find his shot more or his offense and becomes a more aggressive version of himself, he is going to be dangerous on both sides of the ball. So I do hope a lot more of the offense runs through Scotty Barnes this season. 
and the type of leap I see him making. I mean, I see a lot of people going as far as saying Scotty Barnes could be an all-star next season. I'm not too sure I see him as an all-star per se for as soon as this season, but pretty damn close to that, man. And I might be butting my words because maybe he does end up making that big of a leap and does become uh, a second year all-star. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibility, but I think he will be just shy of that, but he's definitely going to up the ante up his numbers from a season ago. And at the very least, if he's not an all-star, I think we can at least agree on this. He will be playing at an all-star caliber level. Yeah. Which I think honestly is more important than being an all-star because the all-star voting gets a little weird sometimes. Exactly. There's Um, so many good players now, right? So sometimes like that gets lost in it all. Right. Uh, It kind of becomes more of a popularity contest at this point. And and I guess that's a credit to how many great players there are. So I know your name more often than not. I guess I'm going to vote for you. Uh, Man, I got to get that number four jersey in your background and hang it up by me, man, because just listen (laughs) to your man. I'm like, man, Scotty is a player, man. You you just have to love him and have to want him on your team. Um, Masai Ujiri, a few years back, he does something insane, or you wouldn't think Masai would do, coming off that LeBron Toe series. Sorry, Canadians, um, about that one, but... Coming off that series, and you fire your head coach, Wayne Casey, who just won Coach of the Year. You fire DeMar DeRozan. He don't fire DeMar DeRozan. You trade DeMar DeRozan to go get Kawhi Leonard for a year. You win a title. Masai, what are you doing? Masai Ujiri does that, and then he drafts three, four years later down the road the closest thing you're going to get to drafting mini Kawhi Leonard. That might be too much. I'm not saying he is going to be that, or he's that now. He's definitely not that now. But, man, like, I'm just sitting listening to you, and – you look at Scotty Barnes, he has already a pretty nice mid-range. I think the biggest thing is just working on the perimeter shooting from three-point range. But exactly. he, he's a great finisher. Already a really, really solid defender with underrated playmaking abilities. Like just he had a few games where he was scratching the scratching the get a triple double. Like, for example, against Denver at Denver. This, man, we keep going back to this road trip, man, where they're on the road. At, on that the road West trip, Coast. a lot of special things happen, man. <laughs> like 25, 8 rebounds, 10 assists. Next night, 21, 9 boards, 5 assists against the Lakers where they smacked the crap out of them. So, like a lot, like you mentioned, a lot of great things happen a few games later at home this time, 31, 17, and 6. So, just – the production, I think, is already there. I think he was getting his feet wet to start the year off. And then when Nick Nurse starts to let him be a little bit more aggressive and, you know, find his footing and, you know, make plays, I thought we saw Scotty really open up some of the playmaking dynamics, dynamics that you brought up and start being more aggressive. And I guess this kind of can segue into how the Raptors can fix their offense or half court offense because they ranked, I want to say, 25th in terms of points per possession per synergy sports and analysis or sports data, excuse me. Um, and I think a big part of that or why they can take that next step, not just for Scotty, but offensively is give Scotty Barnes the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag analysis. Um, Scotty Barnes ranked in the 94th percentile in a pick and roll where he's the ball handler. So he's initiating the pick, the pick and roll. Um, and I think stuff like that, man, are you just letting him like, like Luca kind of just explained there, letting him be more aggressive whether that's him searching for shots, which there's give and take with that. Like it, there does become a point where it's a bad thing, but like a healthy dosage of, Hey, just go do your thing and be aggressive, but also put him in situations where he gets to be more of a playmaker. And just like, like Luca mentioned, man, just letting the offense run through him a little bit more. This will also, we keep bringing this up, but it'll also take some of the burden off of Fred Van Vliet. I think that's also a big yeah. thing. That and Siakam. Right? And Siakam. Exactly. So I, I, I'm really high on Scotty Barnes. I think we can expect maybe an all-star caliber season. Not sure he'll make it, but um, if he does it like again, it'll be really that on close because I think if this Raptors team is going to hit this over 45 and a half wins mark, Scotty's going to, or one of these guys, if it's not Scotty, then you might need both of, or two of Precious, OG, and Gary. But if you're going to hit this, Scotty, I think, has to take the next step or at least show some type of, straightforward growth yeah man that, that was perfectly said i mean yeah you see what he's done in this offseason i mean how can you not bank on scotty barnes making any bit of a leap he is it's inedible and yeah you talked about that 31 17 6 game against your lakers that was incredible to watch man and ultimately this is going to be scotty barnes's team this has to be scotty barnes's team so for those reasons 
give him the ball. Let him be that guy. Let him learn in key situations. Let him, you know, do his thing out there. And I know a lot of Raptors fans or people think this is Siakam's team. It still is his team. Like, you got to segue to Scotty Barnes. Like, he's the face of the franchise. This is his car. He's got the keys to the car. So I think we will see a much more determined, uh, aggressive Scotty Barnes this season. And eventually, I mean, we're going to look like long-term here, but like I, I see him being a bona fide superstar, like a star. Like I see this guy just being uh, the guy. He's got all of the intangibles, all the traits. And look, I'm the first one to admit, Sean, I was dead wrong. I did not think the Raptors were going to um, select Scotty Barnes. But that is why you don't listen to guys like me when it comes to the draft and you listen to guys like Masai Ujiri who makes the final call. They obviously know what they're doing. So that is crazy how they were able to pull that off. I'm so glad Scotty Barnes is a Raptor out of all that. I'm glad I was wrong. And yeah, it's going to be fun watching Scotty Barnes out there uh, go to work and just to see how good he can actually be. And uh, if he does make the all-star team going into the season, man, that's going to be crazy. Cause we got to, we got to get some more Raptors players uh, at the all-star uh, game. I mean, Siakam made it a few seasons ago. Van Vliet made it last season. Yeah. It could be Scotty's uh, turn going into this season. So exciting times ahead. Now quickly, I do want to say this. You mentioned Kawhi Leonard. Would you say he's closer to resembling Kawhi or another name that is brought up a lot with Scotty Barnes Giannis Atatakumpo. As many people have said that Masai really wanted Giannis, but maybe they drafted their own version of Giannis. I'm trying to find where the comparison would come from. He's a better Giannis is a better playmaker than Kawhi. Which I guess you could say Scotty resembles. I don't know. I think he's closer to Kawhi than Giannis. Also, Giannis, he has two DPOYs, but let's be honest, that was because he puts up stats. Giannis is a elite off ball, like weak side defender on ball he's okay he's he's a good one i guess um i think that's what scotty does definitely differ from Giannis, at least projection wise I think yeah, scotty projection wise could be elite both on the ball and off the ball or on weak side um and i think scotty has potential oh no i don't know i think Giannis is a little too far I think if we'll take either, and uh, we'll, we'll think, take either. Every and time. I think what we'll make you do is uh, a film breakdown of Scotty Barnes once the season uh, uh, starts, and then we'll let people decide for themselves. But yeah, you see definitely shades of uh, both of them at times, and I mean, just Scotty Barnes, man, like it, it would be amazing. You know, Raptors lose Kawhi, and then they have their next Baby guy in, in Barnes. So, like again, we're not gonna like like go crazy here and set the bar very high. We're going to take this thing day by day. There, there's going to be growing pains. There's obviously going to be some up and down moments, but uh, there's definitely a lot to be excited about, especially after what we've seen in some of these uh, highlights uh, from the off season. Would it be crazy? This is one thing I do want to add on to what you were saying. Would it be crazy? I actually think this is more Freddie's team. I think this is Fred Van Bleed's team instead of Scott, uh, Pascal. I can see I'm not like knocking by the dusting Pascal. But personally, I would probably go Fred Van Vliet. Well, I mean, put it this way. Who would you want with the ball in their hands uh, down to and with a chance to tie or win the game? Like, who, who would you want in that moment? And that probably answers your question. Are you still going to go with Fred Van Vliet? No, you go Pascal. But Pascal Try to find an example. Had, like, But he's had a lot of those ahead. opportunities, Sean. And, I mean, he has – and, again, you can't go based sometimes on, like, two, three times, but there's been multiple times where Siakam has had kind of like that opportunity to perform in the clutch in big moments. I mean, don't get me wrong. He did show up big when the Raptors were attempting to make history in that comeback against the Sixers. He was putting up some big stat lines. Um, yeah, you know, that, that's a tough question because, I see, I did say at times I want Van Vliet with the ball in pressure pack situations, but yeah, I guess you still got to go with uh, Siakam, but you know what? I would love to see Scotty in those moments, man. Let, let, let him, let him grow. Put it to you this way. Pascal's the best player on the team. I think that's agreed upon. Who's the face of the franchise. Like the, the, the name, I think Next. you go Fred. That's Fred Van Vliet right oh, now. Right now you're saying right now, because like you go back to the title season, for example, the best player was Kawhi, not close, but the face of the franchise was Kyle Lowry. Yeah, that's that's one of the better examples I can think of. Or like, but wouldn't Miami. the face of the franchise now be Scotty Barnes? I mean, I know he's only twenty years old, but like, 
he, he's he's got that he's showing to have that if factor i i mean i guess until he makes that all-star team and you know yeah. if he blo- like look if he blows up this second season prove like, me wrong <laughs> yeah. It, yeah it's his team right so i know what you're saying going into the season yeah you gotta obviously still respect you know guys like siakam and van vliet who have won a championship have an all-star appearance and siakam let's not forget all nba right i know i get on his case a lot but all NBA seasons, no easy feat. I'm glad that they gave him that. I thought I'm glad they didn't rob him. I guess I definitely thought they were going to do that. Um, he was phenomenal last season, so definitely would take any credit away from those guys. But thank you guys so much for tuning into the second episode of the Raptors Nation podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, please do subscribe right here to the Raptors Nation YouTube channel. Ring that post notification bell as well. Lucas teased a bunch of breakdowns, so now he's throwing me on the spot. <laughs> but I'm joking; those will be coming. I am excited to be doing those for you guys this season. And if you're listening on podcasting platforms, subscribe, uh, give us a five-star rating and review is the easiest way to help out the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Luca, thanks for hopping on again for episode two. This was a ton of fun. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace, guys.